Hey guys and welcome. In this tutorial today, we'll be going over how to make a sleeveless shirt in Blender. I'll be showing you guys the basics of doing a sleeveless shirt, as well as if you guys stay to the end, I'll show you some of the last touches I do that typically I don't show in my videos, but they bring the outfits to life most of the time. So stick around to the end and I will show you guys how you can do that. Before we start actually with our simulation, creating a cloth, uh, there's a couple things we need to do to get our scene ready. One of the first things we need to do is make sure your character is rigged. I personally use mix mode to rig my characters. However, you can use whatever you need to as long as that character can be in a T pose. So you'll see if I go to the beginning of my animation, here's our T pose for our character. I'm going back here and there's her action pose. So make sure you're all the way in the T pose for your character. Another thing that's good to note is that in Blender, for whatever reason, uh, depending on the size of your character, your simulation will not work effectively. What this means is that typically your character needs to be large. For instance, this character is around 15 meters tall. So make sure you, when doing this, your character is large. Hey there guys, I also did forget to mention one thing that is vitally important when setting up your scene is to select your character, head over to modifiers for that character, and underneath your armature, make sure you have a collision modifier. You can also go over here to physics and just click on collision. The settings that I find work best for collision are thickness outer, take it all the way down to 0 0.001, thickness inner, take it all the way down to 0 001, and friction is usually fine just at five. So precursor, also make sure you do that. Okay, enjoy the rest of the video. So without further ado, let's actually begin creating the cloth we want for the simulation. So we're gonna just use a plane mainly to do this. So I'm gonna do Shift A, Mesh, and then Plane. And you should have your plane drop at the bottom here. And I'm just gonna do GZ to raise this up, and RX to rotate it, and then I'm gonna type in 90, and then Enter. Okay, so now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to move this so it's not colliding with our character in any way for the mesh. So I'm going to do GY to bring this back out so it's just barely outside of our character. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit 1 on my keyboard, which will take us to this view mode. So in this view mode, now what we need to do, because we're going to want to use the X-ray mode, and to use that, we need to head over to our viewport shading to solid. So click solid, and then click X-ray. Great job so far, everybody. So now the next thing we need to do is get this plane in the correct position. So typically, if your character is in the exact center, uh, you should be fine. However, I find it's just easier to just... Uh, if it's not in the exact center, just barely move it so it's roughly as centered as possible. So somewhere around right there looks pretty centered. We're going to raise this up and we're going to head tab into edit mode. Now the best mode to work with is vertices up here in the upper left. So select vertices. And now I'm going to take these top two vertices and I'm going to do SX. And I'm going to take them just right here outside of the neck. It's basically like real sewing. And so these lines will end roughly on our character. So for instance, if you want like your short sleeves or sleeveless shirt to end like over here with no sleeves, then you're going to want to do your vertices over here. But right now for my rough shape, I want, I think that right here looks a little nicer for the arms. Okay, so now I'm gonna do SX, make that a little bit bigger for the bottom, GZ, and somewhere around right there is fine. And I might make these, I might adjust these, but we're just getting the rough shape. Now I'm gonna do E, 
and then Z to extrude downward. And we're gonna do S to scale this. And we're gonna do Control R. And now we need to add some loop cuts. Uh, and we're adding these loop cuts so this is a little bit more squarish. And so for these loops up here, we gotta create these two like kind of straps. So I'm gonna do S uh, X on those two vertices we just created. And then GZ. Cause I'm trying to get these so they're roughly the same distance from the character. Now I'm gonna take these center two, raise them up. And I'm gonna take these bottom two and do GZ. And now the bottom four, I'm gonna do GZ and raise them up a little bit. And let's add some more loop cuts because now we're gonna create some square shapes. So that's Control R. And then I just scrolled until I saw some squares. And now at this point, I'm gonna try and shape uh, some form of a collar for the shirt. So let's try something around there. And now we need to add some loop cuts over here because we got to keep everything as squarish and uniform as possible. Now, just to save us a little bit of work, I'm going to delete a couple of these. I'm going to hit delete faces. And I think we're getting closer to the shape of one. So one thing to know is you're going to want extra faces up toward the straps and then uh, you won't need quite as many faces below that. So for these straps, I'm going to do control R and I'm going to do like five control R five. And these are looking a little too rectangular. So I'm going to add that. So I know, yeah, we've got some rectangle looking faces here, but that's okay. I think, I think it'll still animate. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to go up to my upper right and toggle off X-ray mode, and you'll see the rough shape we've got. So now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna select this, go to tab, hit A, right click, and then subdivide. And you might be thinking that's enough. It's still not enough. So we're gonna right click and subdivide again, and that should be closer to what we want for our simulation. So the next thing we're gonna do is while everything's still selected, we are going to hit E to extrude it out. And same with the back, you want it just outside of there. And then I'm gonna hit face select mode, left click, hold control, and left click. Rinse and repeat, left click, hold control, left click. Uh, now hold shift, left click, hold control, left click. Hold shift, hold control, left click. Now I'm gonna delete those faces. We wanted to delete all the faces where our character's mesh is coming out of the clothing, but now we gotta just delete the faces but not the edges of the remaining uh, faces. So I'm gonna hit three, head back into x-ray mode, and then just drag and select all of those faces hit delete, and then instead of faces, go a little bit down and say only faces. I'm gonna toggle back off x-ray and we're almost ready for a simulation, but we're not quite. We're gonna do a couple more touches to make this simulation work the best it can. So what we need to do that will help the simulation is there's gonna be a lot of force where these edges are pulling together in the simulation. And we wanna ease the tension of that force. So what we're gonna do is select, hit tab, and make sure your proportional editing is on. So click that proportional editing up top. And we want smooth and we will be using sharp, but first smooth. So now, in these areas where there's a larger gap, we are going to move uh, those areas in closer. I prefer doing edge select mode when doing this and I'm holding tab and I'm just gonna do GY and drag. If you want a better angle, you can do three again, GY grab and same with down here, GY and 
just try and get those you see what I'm doing as lined up as you can and you see from this angle it doesn't look good but from this angle it looks pretty good so now let's do the front a little bit and then we'll do our sharp proportional editing okay so now we're gonna head up here to proportional editing and turn on sharp so now I'm holding alt and shift alt to select another group of edges and with those edges selected I'm gonna grab these areas that have edges attached to them and move them closer to the other edges so I'll show you what I mean I have sharp for proportional editing and I'm going to GY and literally just move those closer like that and don't worry it looks terrible right now we're gonna fix it more and more as we go so now bottom GY sharp is selected and somewhere around there it's pretty close and on this back end all we need, really need to do is same thing hold alt now shift alt then GY and somewhere around right there and you'll see that this means hardly any resistance will occur when this is snapping together so now the next thing I'm gonna want to do is make this look prettier uh, just a little bit and we're gonna do even more once the simulation is done but for now that's fine so now I'm gonna head over here to sculpting and we've got our character with this super ugly <laughs> paper looking thing let's ha head back over to solid viewport and we're gonna get our smooth brush out and I'm gonna turn up the radius on this not too much and you don't want the strength to be like one because that just does too much we're gonna shoot for somewhere right around three up here in the upper right you can enable X mirroring and now you've got your smooth brush and we're just gonna smooth out some of these areas and get it a little nicer looking I am actually gonna increase my brush to like closer to five and you'll see we're making this look much better uh, it's kind of same rule of thumb this is partially just to get it even closer to our character because smoothing it will just make it even closer as we do it but we also just want the best results so we're trying to make it look nice so now we're on the simulation aspect and we should have a fairly successful simulation with the precautions we've taken however I did just remember we're gonna want to do a little bit more proportional editing so head back to layout tab for proportional editing select and same rule with these edges that are connected to the other side we're going to select so we have the very beginning of that edge and then hold control and select down to all those edges so the same on this side shift hold control select down I forgot to turn off the X mirroring so turn that off then move it like so and rinse and repeat for the back end uh, left click hold control left click hold shift where it starts and hold control left click and now I've got those edges and we're gonna do GY again and somewhere around there now we are ready to bake head over here to physics add cloth and I have cloth settings that are preset that I like uh, in the upper right hand corner I will put a link to a different video where I go into more detail about these settings now for the end I'm gonna make it whatever the end for your T pose is so your T pose mine for instance ends at 20 and then it starts to animate the next thing we're gonna do is uh, under shape you will see a sewing option enable that sewing so there's a couple things I think will be fine at zero zero this time however if you're having odd collisions when you sew just turn down the shrinking factor and that might help it basically just makes it so there's less tension in these edges when it's pulling them together okay now collisions I like 12 object collisions we're going to turn the distance all the way down and enable self collisions but turn that distance all the way down and i do have a larger character 
So I have to do the settings slightly different. Usually I like around 2.5 gravity for uh, normal proportion characters. This character is super huge right now. So I'm gonna do five for gravity. And now all we have left to do is bake and see how our sewing turns out. So let's bake it in and see how it goes. While that continues baking guys, I want to show you this really cool add-on uh, that one of my fellow Blender creators sent me for free. So one of my favorite things that he's working on is an asset library. And for the quality of the assets you will get from this add-on, it is amazing. I'm going to add asset and I have a really big scene and character, but let's just make this asset larger. And here's a table and it looks super great. And you'll see, we don't really need to use any modifiers. It might not even make it look better at all or make it look worse if I did. So here's this. And if I add a subdivision, you'll see it didn't even really do anything to his table because he already did such a great job modeling this table. So his goal when doing this was to model everything. So there was no need for any modifiers. This uh, add-on will also include materials. And let's say you want wood for this table. So I had materials for my types and for my uh, sub tiers, I'm going to select wood apply. You'll see you'll get some amazing looking scenes just by getting his add-on. I'll put a link in the description for the current add-on and this new one, including the assets and materials will be coming soon from what I understand. So keep a lookout for it. Okay, so now let's see how that big turned out. Let's head to frame 20. And so it doesn't look good right now, but let me just grab this other piece of clothing and hide it. And you'll see we've got a pretty nice looking uh, shirt. I'm fairly happy with these results. So now we're going to do some minor editing further after it's been baked. So what that is going to entail is head over to modifiers. You'll see your cloth modifier on that article of clothing. Uh, head down to the drop down and say apply. So I'm going to hit A while in tab and I'm going to hit F3 on my keyboard. And just so you guys know, this is a fun little thing. This is basically just a search. Like you can search for odd uh, effects. One thing I want to do is fill holes. And what that did is over here on the sides, it filled in this little teeny bit that was left over after my sewing was done. Uh, and at this point, we want to try and fix our geometry a little bit, even though it looks pretty clean already. We are going to grab where there's this little tapered line that we just filled in. And we're going to hit G twice, which will move that edge only across those faces. And I'm holding Alt G twice. And you'll see we have nice uniform edges now. So hold control G twice and hold control G twice for both uh, of those sides. And right here, don't forget, it's easy to forget this part. Hold control G Y or G twice. So that's good enough. And same here, hold control G twice. So I'm going to head over here to sculpt and I'm just going to touch on this a little bit further. Like I've got my smooth, turn it down this time to around like two, possibly lower and turn back on X mirroring. And we're going to smooth out some of these areas that just don't look that great after the simulation was done, but leave what you want and get rid of what you want. So right here doesn't look great. So I'm going to smooth it out and that's okay. It's going into our character. And that is not a problem because we are going to do another bake that will fix even further some of those odd issues. So we actually want to go into our character a little bit on some of these areas. Something like that. 
and unfortunately at this part of the video I had some strange file corruptions occur so I'm gonna try and explain best what occurred next so after I finished smoothing out the sculpt and having it go slightly into the character um, then I simply went over and did another bake so what that entails is I was went back to my T pose and, it, and you'll see it is inside of my character and this will help having a better simulation because it'll just gently push out of your character the cloth during the simulation so here's me playing my simulation and you'll see it just gently pushes outward like so and I have a nice looking collar that all I did was I extruded up I didn't add any other uh, loop cuts or faces in this um, so it's just one solid face right here and all along the edge and then again I just deleted downward um, to have more of a collar I went over here added cloth and like I said I have preset settings you can check out that video I showed you earlier and down here you don't need sewing this time all you simply need to do is set your end frame to whatever pose you have chosen for your character my pose uh, happens at around frame 40 and then I wanted the anim the physics to end around frame 60 just to give myself options for the character's look make sure object collisions is enabled bring the distance all the way down self collisions bring the distance all the way down gravity I have set to three or five somewhere in there and then just hit bake and you should have something that looks just like this i hope this was helpful for you guys thank you so much and if you made it to the end the best thing you can possibly do to help me and my channel is to leave a like uh, leave a comment and best of all consider subscribing thank you again so much have a terrific day